Hello students, today we are going to discuss the life of Desiderius Erasmus and further we are going to read his book uh, Praise of Folly which is prescribed in your syllabus. So uh, Erasmus was born in Rotterdam on 27th October 1467 as the illegitimate son of the Frisk. So uh, Erasmus was not a systematic philosopher although and with discern in the last body of his writing a certain Erasmusian habit of mind. He was orphaned at the age of uh, 1483 and he came into the care of guardians who sent him to school run by the brethren of the common life in the spirit of Devotio Moderna. Further, we find that he often reflected on subjects that invite philosophical inquiry, the influence of nature versus nature, the relationship between wooden things and the ideal form of government, the nature of faith and the theory of knowledge. Erasmus's view on these subjects are of interest to historians even today and even if they are unstructured because his work circulated widely and his influence in northern Europe was pervasive. In modern parlance we can say that he was an opinion maker. If a general level is needed then we can say that Erasmus's thought is best described as Christian humanism. That is a philosophy of life, uh, life combining Christian thought with classical traditions. He embraced the humanistic belief in an individual's capacity of self-improvement and the fundamental role of education in raising human beings above the level of brute animals. The thrust of Erasmus's education program was the promotion of Dr. Peters, that is learned pity or what he termed as the philosophy of Christ. Further, we know that uh, his, uh, as a biblical scholar, he supported the humanistic call of Ad Pontes or a return to the text in the original language and therefore promoted the study of biblical languages which is Hebrew, Greek and Latin. He was in the vanguard or front line of modern philosophy and his pioneering edition of Greek New Testament shows that he had an understanding of the process of textual transmission and had developed text critical principles. And in politics, Erasmus embraced consensus, compromise and peaceful cooperation ideas he recommended to the participants in the reformation debate albeit with little success. Now considered a foreigner of the reformation by his contemporaries. He broke with Martin Luther over the latest sectarianism, that is denoting or concerning a sect. More fundamentally, the two men disagreed over heuristic, that is enabling a person to discover or learn something for themselves, and engaged in a polemic over the questions of free will. Erasmus took a skeptical position regarding Luther's assertions. Unlike the reformer, he did not believe in the clarity of scriptures and used consensus and tradition as criteria to settle questions that did not allow a rational conclusion. And Erasmus here we can say rarely ventured into doctrinal questions, however, favoring simple faith and devotion over dialectics and scholastic speculation. The circulation of Erasmus's works was temporarily curtailed when the Catholic Church put them on the index of forbidden books, but his ideas saw a revival during the Enlightenment, roughly in 1660 or the age of Milton, we can say, when uh, he was regarded as the forerunner of rationalism. His most famous work is The Praise of Folly. As, uh, has and has remained in print to the present day, a distinction shared by few books from the 16th century, we can say.